Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third webinar from the challenge from linear to sustainable circular systems. We ask you please to watch the video for the challenge introductions. You will find the link in the box description and we will put it also in the YouTube chat. We suggest to open the video in a new tab, please, and leave this leave stream open. And then we will go back at 10.10 to the questions and answers, okay? Welcome to the third webinar of Refrim project. Today, we will explain and clarify what technologies you will be able to work with if applying to the challenge Rethink Fashion from linear to sustainable circular systems. First, let's introduce the project. Our idea is to co-explore digitally enabled manufacturing systems with artists and designers and let them experiment with our technologies. That's why Refrim is looking for artists and designers to co-create innovative fashion concepts together with researchers using novel production technology. As you may already know, CAL will be open until May the 30th and you can apply for one of our three challenges. These challenges are related to three co-creation spaces, so the awarded artist will receive 55,000 euro funding for co-creating innovative art concepts with scientists within a nine month period. You can choose to be disruptive in Berlin, engineered in Linz or responsible in Valencia. In order to apply, you must be a self-employed or professional freelance, SME or a startup based in an EU member state or an associated country of the Horizon 2020. So, when you register yourself in the Start platform to submit a proposal, you will select a hub, Linz, Berlin or Valencia, which will be your main hub, even though you will have the possibility to collaborate with the partners from other hubs. If you get selected, you will sign a grant agreement with the hub and our collaboration will start in October until the 30th of June 2020. In this time, we expect you to spend at least 30% of that period in the hub. So when choosing the challenge Rethink Fashion from Linear to Sustainable Circular Systems, your partners will be ITEX, Care Applications and Profactor. Your hub will be based in the Valencian Mountains, in a city called Alcoy, located 100 kilometers south from Valencia. And our common goal will be to use technologies in order to improve the sustainability of the fashion, getting inspired by nature, working in cycles. Future fashion concepts should lead to a new textile system in line with the principles of circular economy, integrating people, technology and the environment. Conventional textile processes are characterized by using chemical products and high amounts of water and energy. These processes are sometimes harmful for workers' health. For example, sun blasting technique causes breathing problems in workers. The use of potassium permanganate can cause corrosion and is highly toxic and the impact in environment is characterized by huge amount of polluted waters. Sustainable technologies like the one offered in this hub are designed to reduce energy, water, chemicals and time consumption. Moreover, not using water and chemical products leads to zero wastewater processes. All these will lead to a minimum environmental impact of our co-creation project. Now, we are going to open a question round until 10.20, where we will start explaining you the technologies offered by ITEX and Care Applications. 
and by 10.40, Profactor will show you the possibilities you will have when collaborating with them. So, any questions? Good morning. Uh, we are going to open the round session for questions. Uh, any question from your side? Yes, Petra, you're right. We have to decide uh, the hub that uh, you're going to apply, but you can also make collaborations uh, within the other hubs. The thing is that you have to define this in your budget and your work plan. So if you have an idea that has a combination of the technologies that are included in uh, one or more hubs, you will have to define it in the proposal spec. Then, if we receive any proposal uh, that uh, once uh, we are going to evaluate them, we think uh, it should be reallocated to any other hub, it will be done uh, by us and uh, we will talk with you about this, okay? I will read the question, so it's already in the YouTube record. Petra is asking now, referring to your concentration of cooperation with nature, you seem to be the main focus for our proposal. Uh, thank you. So uh, we will we will evaluate your proposals from your, from our part in Valencia, but as Miriam said, if we need if you need to collaborate with another hub, you can do it. Now, Victor Carrasco is asking, in our case, we are not sure if our project falls under circular production or under 2D to 3D. What is the best way to determine it? So, as Miriam just said. Yeah, uh, I think you should uh, focus uh, your proposal on the technology. Uh, think uh, that uh, in which in which technology do you have uh, more experience? Uh, your portfolio, your uh, your previous work on uh, on the on the project you have done. Uh, then uh, you you can do you can do it in uh, in any hub. It doesn't matter if it focus more in one than in other. Uh, then uh, once we evaluate the proposal, we can see if. Uh, uh, we think it is not uh, focused to the one you have focused it. We can change it and uh, talk with you in order to, to see uh, if you want to, to change or no and uh, arrive to uh, any agreement. Mm -hmm. In this way, you're able to, to know what are your your strength your strong points and your weaknesses so try to define your proposal in a way that you look stronger so uh, decide with the with the hub you're going to choose in this way with the fantastic videos <laughs> so what i was uh, mentioning is that your your question is similar to the one that victor asked So the, the answer will be the same. Like, look in the evaluation criteria, look for your strong points, look, as Miriam said, which technology are you going to use mostly of the time? 
and then uh, you will be able to decide in which half you will uh, apply for. Even though if we receive uh, a proposal uh, in one of the halves and we uh, think that it fits more in another half, we will just uh, pass to the, to the other half and you won't have any problem. The idea is that you have a defined and clear idea, a work plan, a budget, and a good video to attract us to, to be the awarded one. So Anna asked, how does it work with the three different hubs? Are the 20 artists going to be divided equally between the hubs? Yes, we have two calls, 10 people for every call. Next call will be launched on March 2020. So if you don't feel like applying for this one or if you not you don't get awarded, you can try again. Uh, there will be uh, three people in Berlin Hub, three people in Hub Valencia and four people in, in Hub Linz, probably this first call. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, we will we will decide who is the fourth uh, people going in the uh, <clears throat> regarding the quality of the proposals. So maybe it's not fourth in length. We are not sure. There is uh, another question. Uh, the aim of the project is to collaborate with scientists. Could you say a bit more about this area? Do we select the scientists freely? Or do you suggest possible collaborations? Um, this, this depends mainly on, uh, on, the, on the technology you are going to work on. Uh, in each hub, it will be uh, different scientists that will be uh, uh, collaborating in developing your idea. So depending on the technology you want to use to develop your idea, different technologists and scientists will be there to, to work with you, okay? Mm -hmm. You can check in the web of Refrim the technologies we can offer. So you don't choose the scientists, but the technology. Now, Victor is asking, do you think a project based or around 3D printing in textiles with recycled materials fit on the circular production hub? For sure. Yeah. In fact, uh, in this webinar, you will see that at 11, Profactor is uh, presenting uh, the Polyject technology, which is about 3D printing. Please keep in mind that we are open to help you. You can go always to the help desk and ask us personally about your doubts in the proposal and application process. So we have three more minutes and then we will invite you to play the next video which is about laser technologies, ozone treatment, eco finish, micro nebulization technologies. These uh, technologies are hosted in ITEX and care applications, which uh, are both located in Alcoy. In our co-creation space, you will be able to work with laser technology. In this video, you can see the possibilities the laser has and the performance of the equipment. This equipment uses a popular software and has a 1 meter long per 1.2 meter width capacity, so you can treat big pieces of fabric.
you will see that many materials can be finished with this technology. Laser marking on fabrics and garments is based on the sublimation capacity of the dyes. This means from solid to gas by the application of a high intensity heat source. The laser has the ability to influence at the nanometric level of the first layers of a material. This means it is able to remove color and even material in controlled areas according to the designs selected. The use of laser technology provides savings in energy, water, chemical products and also time on the garment finishing processes. In addition, laser marking can be combined with other technologies and finishing processes, such as ozone treatments and micro-nebulization technology that could be explained by care applications. Care Applications works to reduce the environmental impact generated by the garment industry through new methods and devices. The technology Ecofinish Nebulization is a system able to obtain new effects on garments. By applying chemical products or dye stuff directly inside the front loading open pocket washing machines. The system micronizes the water droplets and product until it achieves a misty effect, thus allowing its controlled diffusion on the material. It is only applied the quantity of water and products that the garments are able to absorb, 
therefore no waste are produced. It starts from a base in which the amount of water consumed is reduced compared to the traditional processes of dyeing and washing in garments, as well as chemical and auxiliary products. There is also a reduction in working time and energy consumption. On PDF fabrics, we can apply dye styles to obtain different coloring effects, such as space dyes, flat and penetrated garment dyes, fade effects, enzymes wash, and natural dyes. Also, on garment dyed and denim garments, we can achieve different levels of bleaching and oxidation using ecological products. In addition to the special finishes, it can be nebulized functional finishes on garment, such as softening, several kinds of resins, or microcapsules. Now uh, we are going to continue with uh, your questions for this uh, session. So please, if uh, you want to do any uh, any question or whatever, uh, ask us uh, into the chat. There is a question from Petra. Uh, what about cleaning the air and water? Which kind of systems do you integrate? Well, uh, we don't really clean the air. What we do is don't pollute uh, even the water. Uh, what we do is mm, uh, change the conventional textile processes, which are really uh, bad for the environment, to clean uh, processes. So what we do is not to pollute. We are not trying to clean the air. <laughs> it's a difficult thing to do. We we want to to be able to process uh, garments and fabrics which are sustainable. Um, hello, this is Carmina. Concrete applications, uh, for instance, uh, regarding nebulization system, we apply only the quantity of water and products that the garments are able to absorb. Uh, then there is no waste, so there's nothing to, to, to clean. Um, not all, all processes can be done by this system, but most of them, yes. Is the sound good now? Thanks, Elena. Okay, Petra, and you're asking another question. Can we include cleaning systems for the resting pollution? As we said, there's no waste. We don't uh, create any waste. For example, in laser technology that you will see in the video that there's some smoke, we have a ventilation system integrated in the equipment which uh, um, collects all the, all the smokes generated 
and uh, most of most of this smoke is particles are particles so these particles are collected in a in a filter and then we treat the filter but in fact we own this this equipment for more than a year and we haven't had to to clean this filter so we can assume a zero, wa zero waste uh, process for the laser technology as once you you have to do the maintenance your your uh, probably have done more than two years uh, utilization of the equipment. Regarding the question about uh, washing with enzymes, uh, we can apply also enzymes to uh, the nebulization system. So again, no water uh, discharge is in this process. So you're asking about the the kind of substances that that are in the filter, and the answer is that uh, uh, most of it is the is particles of the dyes or the material we're working on. So if we are treating leather or wood, there are particles of this material which are uh, organic materials, but when burning, they convert into inor inorganic. I'm not pretty sure 100% that uh, all, the, all the materials will be inorganic, but I, I'm pretty sure from my environmental knowledge that, that it, this will be inorganic or inert. So it can be treated in a in a disposal. But as I said, uh, if you collaborate in the refrain project, you won't have to to consider these wastes in your process, as there's no need to treat these filter residues mm, in more than two years. I don't know what you mean with compost, but no. <laughs> no, because you compost organic wastes, and I'm saying that we are going to treat inorganic burnt wastes. Thanks for your interest, Petra. I hope you you like the video. I think there's a lot of possibilities in this hub to to achieve really good uh, process uh, or really good passion lines with uh, zero waste, with a responsible process. So I really encourage everybody to try to be more sustainable and and choose to to have uh, responsible fabrics another question from le grand tour do you think that laser technology is a good way to reduce all garments different kinds of materials cotton or polyester etc cutting or transforming them or it is not ecologically affordable i really think that there's uh, huge possibilities of reuse uh, materials uh, what we will have to to check and to test together if we collaborate is the resistance of these garments if these garments have been 
already used and we treat them by laser, we have to check uh, uh, the, the, the power we are going to use and try to treat them more kindly as we can, we can regulate this power, this, uh, this, this uh, level of, of uh, strength of the laser. We can be a, we, we, we will be able to, to treat them and not to damage them. And we have already tried cotton, polyester. We have tried uh, many kinds of, of garments and compositions and blends. So we have a, a pretty big uh, expertise already in many kinds of garments. So we will be able to to treat anything you you are thinking mostly. Question: <laughs> Does texture of textile influence of, on laser cutting? Yeah, for sure. We have to try the different textures. We uh, th this will be a research for us, and we have we have already tried different textures already, and. We have tried on blankets, we have tried on velvets, we have tried uh, on wood, on leather. So we have uh, a bit of expertise in different, te different textures. We have to modify the, the set up of the, of the machine, but we can do it together. We can collaborate and co-create uh, uh, your ideas using our technology expertise. You're welcome. Feel free to ask us by the help desk. In fact, the help desk uh, is answered by, by me <laughs> and Miriam. So uh, if you have questions about Hub Valencia, you will have uh, the possibility to ask us and receive a really good answer. Even though you are asking about another half, we can really resent to our partners there so yeah we are open to help you and even though there's not the even though there's not the, te the, is it the technology webinar now, we can also answer about the call management as we are in charge of that. If you have questions now about how to apply or how the evaluation will be, you can also ask in this time frame. And then at 11, we will invite you to watch the video from Profactor and Stratasys, which is about collegiate technology. And then they will start answering at 11.05. But maybe if you don't have more questions, we can close this round and start watching the videos and uh, see if Elena or Leo can confirm it that they can start before. Perfect, so please start watching the video 
and Elena and Leo will be with you. They said in two minutes, so I think we can start at eleven point five, even though, or I don't know. <laughs> So from our side, I take, oh, we have another question. Perfect. Um, the last question is uh, a general question about the application process. Can we consult the idea at some point and ask which hub will work best for a particular project? Yes, uh, you can uh, you can send uh, through the help desk uh, your uh, your idea, and uh, if uh, we can help you in order to focus your idea in uh, in uh, in any of uh, the three hubs, uh, we can for sure help you. Yeah. The, uh, this morning we have already uh, answered about these questions. The uh, there's many people that are doubting if they fit more in a hub or in another, and we have already given uh, many tips. So re re listen the the webinar, and uh, you will you will find that we we gave already so many tips. And uh, I think for. For this time frame, we are going to close the round. We thank you, everybody, for watching and us. Don't hesitate to ask anything you need in the help desk. And uh, watch, please, the video about ProFactor. We will post now in the YouTube chat the link. And. Uh, you will be able to talk now with Elena and Leo from ProFactor. Thanks and goodbye. Bye. Welcome everyone to the last part of our webinar. We are Leo and Elena. We are scientists working at the company ProFactor in Austria. In this part of the workshop, we are going to discuss the use of polyject technology for rethinking fashion from linear to sustainable circular systems. I hope you all had time to watch the video. This video was about uh, yeah, a short introduction about what polyject technology is about. 
And now this is the time for questions. So we are really happy to answer all the questions that you can have about this technology. So please feel free and sorry for all the technical problems with the link and the sound and everything. So Leo, this is Leo. Leo, yeah. hello, because he said hello before, but he was... Okay. I'm still quite quiet. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks also, Elena, for for uh, hosting this session now. And maybe a few words to the PolyChat technology in addition. Uh, for those of you who were on the first days on Tuesday, this uh, what the session now is about, uh, another aspect of the PolyChat printing. So, of course, you can also ask the question concerning the polychat itself, but this time it's about the uh, uh, linear to sustainable circle, circular systems. So, also introducing fabrics and so on to the polychat technology, how this uh, is turning out, how, uh, how this can play out and so on. So, please feel free to, uh, to ask us. We are here. I am posting in the chat two new links where you can see specific examples of the use of polyjet on textile and for fashion design. So if you want to, to have a look, you can watch to these videos additionally. You can also find them in the description below. Yeah, that's right, in the description of the YouTube video. Yeah, actually, I would like to come back to one of the, the questions that Le Grand Tour posted before. The question was about, about the possibility of reuse of old garments to transform them in something new. Uh, actually, this is the idea we have with this polyject technology in this hub. The, we think that the, the use of a garment with this either old fashioned or or you know you want to to give the the garment a second life it, it is possible to use a garment which are already used um, with the polyject technology and 3d printing to give them a, a second life No. There is a question, so I will read the question before, so from Victor Carrasco. Can you melt down the filaments of your garments back to their original state? Please, Leo. Um, here to clarify, the polyjet technology is based on inkjet printing. So you can think of a 3D inkjet printer. So melting them down to a filament, you cannot do that. I mean, you can do uh, melt it down the filaments, yes, but somehow, however, this will not serve the job for polyjet printing. So other printing technologies are better suited for that, like FDM printing uh, or FFF printing, as it is called sometimes. The reason is as this is an inkjet printer uh, you need to fulfill some limitations like think of a desktop printer you maybe have at home or in your office that is an inkjet printer you can buy in every shop and every hardware shop more or less and here you have a certain kind of ink cyan magenta yellow black whatsoever and you press this through a nozzle and there you have a viscosity window where you can where the ink can pass uh, as long as you fulfill this limitation you're free to go basically uh, the difference to fdm printing and the filament you're asking for is that you have a, a polymer filament as you already suggest and this you can feed in into a hot through a hot and in a nozzle or different kind of nozzle and through an extruder so different technology i hope this answers your question 
Yeah, one additional thing is that actually FDM technology is also available in the in the hub. Exactly. Yeah. So in the hub, we have not just in this hub, but general in the in the whole um, technology map, so to say, we have also FDM available at certain partners, and they're ready to use more or less. So. They are free to use in in the framework of, of the projects. Uh, however, this session is on polychat technology, and here also a difference. Maybe you're wondering why do I need to use polychat over filament uh, fabrication? So this is what are the differences there? And just uh, I want to give a short, a really short um, difference. And this is, as said already before, the, the technological and material deposition. Um, but one benefit and the major advantage of Polychat is that you can print several materials at once, up to six individual materials. Think of it. So like an inkjet printer, you have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So you can print uh, more or less true colors. Uh, every available colors you can mix with the four bases, but you have two additional materials. So what you can do there, think of grading between stiff and flexible materials so that you have a gradient between, let's say, hard rigid materials and the real flexible stuff provided on your fabric. Yeah. And yes, it's the Polychat technology by Stratasys. Yeah. And the question from Petra Meyer. We are part of, uh, well, Profactor is part of the three different hubs, actually. So in this hub, Valencia, we are part of Hub Valencia, but we are located in Linz, actually in a city close to Linz, Steyr. <laughs> so, so yes, if you are going to work with the Polychat, Polyjet technology, we are going to be your main contact in Austria, means. And Leo already asked, uh, answer the question from Michal. Is the Polyjet technology from Stratasys, who is also, which is also on board? Yes, so Stratasys is part of the project team and can also help here in realizing your project idea. And what the, just some insight thing. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. Uh, now I don't know where I was. No, so just kidding. Uh, some internal um, or some insight uh, consideration here is uh, we have three partners inside the whole project work frame that can use or have access to Polychat technology. And depending on the project, we, we split here the, the, the tasks, so to say, or um, one partner will be major, real, majorly re responsible for that. For example, if you want to have a real true color uh, experience and want to play out with a lot of colors, uh, obviously the partner of choice would be Stratasys uh, itself. If you want to dig more into, let's say, material possibilities, uh, smart features uh, like, for example, uh, illumination parts or whatsoever, you obviously will be guided to us. If it's going in the direction of, let's say, other additive techniques, then Haratech is the uh, partner of choice. So this is just to give you a little bit of insight. So we have a new question from Michael. Are there other 3D printing technologies apart from Polyjet in which it's possible to obtain a gradient from flexible to rigid? Actually, you already uh, mentioned the technologies that are in house, but the possibility of mixing different materials is something. To that is... answer the mm. question, um, no, 
there is only polychat. Uh, think of it once more uh, as with inkjet printing, you transfer here a picture that from, from your screen, from your PC, that is pixel based uh, to, to an analog picture. So what you print is actually pixels. Uh, when you want to grade here between the colors, it's it's on the pixel level. And the same can be said on polychat printing. It's on the volume pixel, how we call it, or a really nice name, voxel. Don't know who came up with this name, but that's the name. Um, it's voxel-based printing. So this means each voxel, so a volume pixel, you can tune the, the, uh, the hardness. So can tune a gradient between flexible and rigid. Other printing technologies like FDM printing, you, you don't have at maximum two sure. materials at hand. And since this is a filament, you cannot go down with the resolution to that part where you can uh, tune between the gradients. And even if you uh, ignored it and want to have it, yeah, I don't care for a volume pixel, I want to have it in a big part, you cannot mix them because the filaments themselves has, has a certain volume, so you cannot mix them freely. And quite often you cannot mix at all. <laughs> I hope this answers your question, Mikkel. Yeah, actually, if, if you want to have a feeling of the flexibility of the material, you can have a look to the last video that we post in the description of the YouTube video. The, there is really a nice uh, video of a polyjet material printed on a textile. So, there is another question. Voxel size in polyjet. Uh, let me think of it. Uh, at least this depends on the droplet size. And here we are in the range when you mix it, let's say uh, 20 to 50 microns. So maybe you can mention the software we are working with. Uh, the, the voxel software or the, what there, there are several, vo no, several, uh, voxel software or voxel based software is a thing, of course, and uh, we can offer via Stratus is here kind of a cooperation here. We personally at house, we don't have uh, a voxel based software. However, we still can grade between the materials and uh, we use a different kind of slicer or a different kind of slicer, the Stratus' own slicing software where you can assign pre prior to that, uh, assign the material and the pre material mixture. So what we can offer in-house and what standard is that you can grade between the materials at least five different gradings you can get with standard. Voxel is uh, better suited for stratuses. I would ask you to ask that question again to the help desk so that Naomi from stratuses can answer your question in a more appropriate way. Also, for those of you who were watching yesterday, yesterday's session on PolyChat, here we showed also a video on introducing electrical features like LEDs and so on and integrate them uh, with PolyChat technology. Maybe here some comments on that again. Uh, in the reframe work frame, uh, we have 
access and we try out and we play out with different kind of materials that are not standard by stratuses. So this is here the interesting playground and uh, why you not just go directly, for example, to stratuses. So we, we are open in the materials as long as they fulfill this viscosity limitation from an ink in general. Also, one question was asked yesterday that would fit also to this session about sustainability in the polyjet quite in general, or how polyjet, since you cast polymers, this is not really sustainable, one can say, uh, how this is now affected. And uh, answer to that is that sustainability is you cannot answer it in an easy way. So there are several aspects. One aspect is when you think of additive manufacturing, you place your polymer only when needed, so on demand. You generate no or at a minor amount of waste. You place, as said, the polymer where you want to have it and uh, in a limited way, of course. The second thing is quite of, of this additive character. Additive manufacturing play takes place in, let's say, small enterprises, small companies uh, or medium-sized companies, and this is a local business. So uh, what you generate here are short transport length, quite in general, uh, highly uh, individualized products in the end or objects, uh, quite in general, or on models demand. on mm -hmm. demand. Mm -hmm. uh, so the transportation aspect you can not neglect because you need the material as well. But for the final object, this is this is rather low because you just just need the printer and the material. No molds no waste mm -hmm. and of course when you think of let's say um large amount of products you often need uh storage in printing or in this additive manufacturing in general uh you don't need that so you don't need storage places that has also an impact on on sustainability, on life cycle assessment aspects and uh, such things. We have still three minutes left, so uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, we say that we are looking forward to discuss with you your ideas and Definitely. Yeah, to share the scientists and the designs point of view, designer point of view. It could be really, really a nice mixture. So please apply. <laughs> of course, uh, after this webinar sessions, you are always welcome to, to ask us. Just write to the help desk. You'll find the email in the description and here on the slide. Uh, ask your questions, it will be forwarded to, mm -hmm. to us or to the other respective experts and we are happy to ask your questions also later on. Uh, until then, uh, as already Elena said, we are looking forward to your uh, nice and great applications. Uh, as said, please apply. Uh, there is always a way to, to produce things. There's always a way to fabricate things. We're really curious about uh, new design possibilities, new art aspects and so on. Here also maybe a little bit of insight. Um, we are scientists, we are technicians, uh, we are 
<laughs> this sounds maybe already wrong in my head. Uh, we are quite limited in the few uh, things regarding what is possible. We have our our vision that's going into often a process, a product, or whatsoever. But this out of the box thinking is not often the case. So here we are really curious uh, in in some out of the box ideas, some novel. Uh, aspects how we can play with the available material, available process, available technologies uh, that bring the both of us forward. Okay, with I think we should start closing the today's webinar. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, oh, sorry. Yeah, we have a question. Petra Mayer, what about the involvement of young people of urban areas? Who is working on that part? So, um, you mean the involvement of people at, uh, apart from uh, the artists and the scientists on the project? Can you be more specific about the question, Petra? You are asking if other people apart from the designer or artist and the scientist who are signing the contract are participating in the in the project? Yeah, because we have... Um, yeah, actually, this is something that uh, should be part of the designer or artist, the, the artist's idea. If your idea is related to revival of urban areas, this should be included in your in your project. But there is no a direct participation of the other people apart from um, the artist. Maybe we do not get the question in the right way. Uh, the thing is the whole structure and the whole hub structure we chosen for. So we have Berlin, Linz and Valencia. The whole idea is to um, attract young people, attract artists mm -hmm. in these areas at first, but not limited to that, to revive the urban areas. So this is one of the core uh, aspects of the whole project of the reframe project, uh, and we we try to do this with the with with this cause to to find interesting um, applicants. interesting applicants and so on. Uh, I hope I get that question of yours right, and my answer fulfills that. Otherwise, uh, you can also ask the help desk for for a in this generic question. But as I said, one of the key aspects is, and the structure is. When you say how... What, how, what you mean by young people? <laughs> so more, young people is a very broad... He's free about how to involve more young people. Mm, I would say that... Uh, the applicant is completely free about the idea he or she wants to develop. If in your idea you are thinking about how to come close together to young people in certain urban areas, this is really could be a nice idea. But uh, at the end, we the technician and scientists are working directly with the artist. And if if in your idea you are involving more people this is something that I mean there will be describe. there will be some uh, not just workshops but uh, for example in Berlin they uh, want to have hackathons and so on to to or public events open, to attract people yeah. open public events to attract people uh, that they can apply and play in in reframe so from this side. But in principle, um, 
whoever wants to apply can apply. Yeah, sorry, Petra, if we didn't get completely <laughs> the question. Yes, as Leo said, please write us in the help desk and we will elaborate our answer and try to help you as much as we can. Okay, so we are ready actually four minutes. Um, they were like ahead of time. So, academic 15 minutes are sorry. not there, so. <laughs> So thank you very much for joining the webinar. Uh, once again, we are looking forward to receive your application. Thanks to all the participants today, Patricia, ITEX, care application. And I, I hope we could solve your doubts. And everything is a little bit more clear now. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.